Hi, this is Lisa McManus from ATK Gearheads, and I'm here to answer some of the questions that were posted to our walks, walk versus skillets video. Uh, first, a whole bunch of people had questions about what their stovetop, uh, how their stovetop and the particular type of stove that they have would interact with woks. People asked if they have an electric stove or an induction stove or glass top um, stove, whether that would work with a wok. Um, in my experience, when I tested woks, all of the woks did work on a uh, induction and electric stoves. Um, we also test them on gas in the test kitchen. I've also used woks, including the winner at home. I have a very old coil electric burner. Works great, works fine. And as you saw in the video, I use um, a standalone gas burner. So I haven't really done that for cooking at home because I have a stove, but for the video, I did use a gas burner. That one's called um, an Iwatani gas burner. They're very inexpensive and they're available in a lot of um, particularly Asian markets or online. Um, and they're fine. There's a lot of other commenters mentioned they work great. If you have any questions about your own stove versus those, you do need a little butane canister. It's a little tricky, but I will say I did test all of the recommended walks from our story, including the winner, um, both on induction and a uh, glass top, um, electric and they work but there's a few things you need to know first you want to make sure that you are um preheating the wok thoroughly give it more time because there's not flames licking up the sides of the wok um you need to let that base get hot and then let some of the side walls get hot um and grace young uh the author of Breath of a Walk and Stir Frying to the Sky's Edge and the Wisdom of the Chinese Kitchen. She very graciously shared her knowledge of walks with me. So I'll tell you what she told me, which is that she flicks water on the rock, on the walk while it's heating up, when it's heated up, when she thinks it's heated up. And you'll see it actually, it's a great trick. You'll see it actually sizzle and evaporate. And you can see exactly how far up the sides the heat has gone. So it's a great way to just sort of gauge how long you need to preheat. You might want to preheat on a slightly lower temperature, but for a lot longer, and then do that little, you know, flick some water in and see the sizzle and how quickly it evaporates to gauge how hot your wok is when you're ready to start cooking. It's going to take a little longer. You got to have a little more patience. There's not as much control because you're going to have a more sustained heat. Um, so like unlike gas, when, when you turn it down, it cools it down right away. You may want to have a second burner that's on a little bit lower heat or just take it off if it gets too hot and then put it back. Um, but that you can cook in, it's, it's not as ideal as a, as a gas stove, obviously, or a radiant coil where there's no glass. Glass is a kind of a bad conductor of heat. So although it looks really cool, it doesn't give you that same responsiveness with the pan that um, gas or an open coil burner would, but give it a little time, preheat it thoroughly, and it does work. Um, not going to be as exciting as in restaurants, the, the walks in Chinese restaurants, you know, their burners are super high powered. They want to really knock it out fast. They're doing that very fast style of stir frying. Grace, you know, told me not all stir frying has to be that violent and fast at home. It can be a little slower. Uh, we do that trick and she showed us that trick of, um, putting the meat in a flat layer and letting it brown in place without moving it. So you don't have to be moving the ingredients the whole time in a home stir fry setting, according to Grace Young, uh, who should know. And, <laughs> and you know, she's right. You can get the browning started and then start moving the food around. Um, and as some people pointed out, yes, you can take the food out and, um, you know, take the meat out after it's brown, set it aside, do the vegetables, to set, you know, put it all back together. And one of the things during our wok testing that we learned is that we like a lightweight wok because as you're taking food out and putting it back in, you're not, you're able to lift that wok with one hand and take out the food with the other. We found a really big, heavy wok sitting in one place, like a cast iron wok. You're fine. You're scooping the food out bit by bit instead of being able to just lift it and remove. So that transfer of ingredients in and out really helps with a lightweight wok. And also that responsiveness to heat. When you turn the heat up, it gets hotter. When you turn it down, it gets cooler very quickly. We found a big cast iron wok. It's kind of one direction. It's going to keep getting hotter. Um, and it was harder to maneuver and to get the food out quickly 
So that was, um, I hope, answering the question of all the different people who said, I have this kind of stove, will it work? Yes. Um, if you have any doubt or you really don't like the way your stove performs, sure, you can get a standalone burner. Um, and, you know, that will work as well. Um, another question that we had was about, let me see. We have a lot of different questions. I noticed you used a metal spoon for the carbon steel wok. I noticed that when using metal, it takes off the seasoning you've built up. Is that okay? Yes, it is. I recommend that you go watch another video called Walk Therapist by Grace Young. It's on YouTube. It's great. It won a James Beard Award. It's that good. It's funny. It's pretty quick. Um, but it's super informative and comforting about the seasoning on a walk and what you should and shouldn't worry about. Um, bottom line is, as Grace told me, and as she says in that video, a metal utensil is not a problem. Yes, you will scrape up that seasoning in little places, but it will keep building. It's not something, seasoning is not like a one-way street. <laughs> it keeps, it waxes and wanes as it's building up and you can nick it and stuff, but it doesn't matter. It eventually will become more and more seasoned. Those little scratches are not gonna damage it. You're not damaging your walk. Your seasoning will continue beyond those little scratches. And, and as Grace says, it, it adds character. So, you know, her, her video is really reassuring specifically about walk seasoning, but also about, you know, carbon steel seasoning for skillets or cast iron seasoning. The real big answer is like, don't worry, you can't wreck it. And if you do, you can scrub it all off and start seasoning again if you really want to. Honestly, unless you've built up some gunk on there, everything you're doing is progressing it. And the best way to really move your seasoning forward, I've found, is like make some popcorn in there or um, deep fry. I had never deep fried at home. I always thought it was such a mess, but now I deep fry in my wok because you can use only a couple of cups of oil and it because it's kind of bowl shaped that oil becomes somewhat deep with only a few cups of oil instead of quartz and um, those high sides contain the splatter and when it splatters it's seasoning your wok um, I have made potato chips you know slicing the potato with a mandolin very thin putting a few in at a time um, I used two russet potatoes and ended up with a pile of gorgeous potato chips in a very short time I just kept a, a rack you know, a rim baking sheet with a wire rack in it in my oven on low, uh, you know, like 200 degrees. And I would just put the batches in there. And when we were done, oh my God, so good. Um, I've made, I just made potato latkes in my wok. It's super easy. Um, so, and chicken karaaji, um, Japanese fried chicken, little pieces I did in my wok. And every time you, you um, deep fry in your wok, it's like pushing that seasoning ahead so much faster. Um, so, you know, you can have a little fun, have a little delicious food and make your walk even better. Um, let's see if there's any other questions. I think I answered almost all of them, but, um, you know, if, as you take a look in the comments, I've also written some answers to people's specific questions and, uh, thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time on Gearheads.